G'day everyone, welcome back to Life on the Hulls. I'm Ross, I'm building a 40 foot composite catamaran on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. And uh, this week's episode, I'm gonna be dealing with a big midsection bulkhead and putting the body on the line, getting this thing uh, this thing in place and uh, and a couple of other smaller internal components that I need to deal with to, uh, to piece together this giant jigsaw puzzle of a project of mine. So thanks for joining me and uh, let's get into it. All right, so I've got this um, uh, mid-section bulkhead here, that, which is, forms the, the part of the companionway into the forward stateroom on the starboard side. Uh, it's a big mother, it's actually two sheets of plywood, sheet together, scarfed, and uh, yeah, it's got some weight in it, and I managed to get it up here on my own, so, which is pretty good, I've got it up over, luckily I can slide stuff over, over the back of the mould there. I've got to get this companionway out and have a bit of a fiddle down there, I just want to get it in place, I want to cut a door in it, so firstly I can take some weight out of it, and secondly, I can then start working on the positioning. Very important I get this positioning exactly right before I start glassing stuff in. Alright, so I'm going to start having a bit of a mess around down in there. So I'm going to try a fitment here and uh, hopefully I can get a door cut at some point here. And then I can take a fair bit of weight out of this. Alright, please. Yeah. So it's a bit good having that in place. That's actually a perfect fit and it's right on the line where it needs to be. So now I can fit this companion way back in, start to work on uh, some finer adjustments in here. So what I'll envisage to do now is find the correct position for this robe petition. This one's already in the right spot, so I can actually mark the bulkhead and then I can cut out a door that's gonna allow me access through once this is glassed in place. So the nice thing is that once this floor is glassed down, I can put that bulkhead in and the one here on the forward head uh, and still be able to remove these modules. Because once these bulkheads are in place, I can then remove these steel purlins and I'll be able to have access uh, in and out by the stairway or the companionway. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually draw on the actual bulkhead. I've been drawing on the peel ply, but that's a problem when I have to remove a bit. I lose my line, so it's got to come off. Uh, so I'm going to have to remove the bulkhead. Oh, it's raining two days after the massive push for us here. It is pissing down. Thank God. I mean, honestly, we've had a shocker. We've had a shocker. And listen to that. Yes. Almost makes you cry. Bring it on. All right, so what I do know is that this is dead vertical and this is in exactly the right place. The bulkhead's in the right place. I can now, now I've removed the peel ply, I can now draw the position on here. Remember, this isn't a decorative face here. This is actually going to have a, uh, a, a, a liner on it, perhaps wood veneer, perhaps um, vinyl, I'm not really sure yet. Um, and I'm basically, and get the position so that I can cut an access hole so I'd have to climb in over the top of that bulkhead and get in down in here to do any work. I'm going to be able to uh, ascertain where, these, uh, where the door is in the back. There's that one. Thank you. 
Okay, so I can now cut out a door here. I'm gonna cut out something that's you know, reasonable size for me to be able to get in and out. Um, I'm not gonna cut it right to the floor, although the bulkhead actually does allow for a flat entrance right through with no raised bulkhead at the bottom. I'm gonna leave a little bit there just for strength while I'm moving this bulkhead in and out. So everything's all solid here now, and I'm pretty much determined the exact space that I've got to deal with here. Sometimes I do and kill myself, trying to manage this shit on my own. And some things, now we're getting to the stage where things are actually quite heavy. Um, in the past, I've all been reasonably light now, at the point where everything has a weight to it. I've got to then consider my safety, and uh, yeah, that was close. <laughs> Wasn't sure what was going to happen now, but I was going to take out my phone or take out the boat. I'd rather take out my phone, as I've done a few of those in the uh, course of this build. I've gone through a few cameras, but yeah, for now, <laughs> I've got the bulkhead out. And I'm going to cut the door out with the power saw. I'm not going to find out what the jigsaw is. Alright, so I've got the door here. I'm going to cut it out with the power saw. The jigsaw just takes too long. And uh, my power saw sort of went through that for five minutes. Uh, just had about eight inches of rain and Janet's decided to leave me again and we're moving her again. Can't blame her, can you? <laughs> Sit there. Come here, fella. The Sam's in full support of this um, seventh Janet exodus from the Boardman household. And uh, so that's catch her breath. Poor flights. Janet always finds a unit for me to move her out when she decides to leave me that doesn't have an elevator. So here we are at the top of the fourth flight. Sam and I shady. He's been to gym this morning. So have I. But I'm not going to tell you the real truth until the end. You've got to hang out till the end of the video. I'll tell you the truth. Stay tuned and don't fast forward. So today I'm working on a solution for the freezer down there. The freezer's on our starboard side at the bottom of the butterfly companionway as you go down it's basically a 120 litre freezer i was given when i purchased the mold i actually got a template here which is basically a mold or a, the actual part made off an mdf box now i'm going to replicate it i'm actually going to build a new one because it's pretty scummy it's pretty ordinary i could just spare it paint it um but you know i want i want it to be new so i will ultimately replace it but the good thing is i have this complete um, freezer unit here, or at least a pattern of it, here, um, that I know fits down in the companion way, and I'll show you a picture of the completed thing right now. So what I have to do though is I do need to trim it. It's 1.4 metres long, so it's 1400 mils long. 
I need to trim off these edges here and it actually defines the boundary between this bulkhead here and this one back here. So it's actually sitting in place there. I've just cut a piece of MDF down here and that's actually the front face. That's a template for the front face and that intersects with, the, uh, with that butterfly staircase. So because this is a template, I'm gonna just make a couple of little notched out fittings to try to work out how to get it to sit dead flat. As you can see over here, it needs to straighten up like this to be perpendicular to this bulkhead. Um, the problem I have is that down here, it's still sitting on flanges and things, but I, I do need to derive a proper shape. So I'm gonna have to notch out a couple of areas here, just here and here, and then another one over here. And then ultimately along the edge of this step here, it has to intersect with the, uh, with the, um, the corner of this here, as you can see in this picture, I'll show you right now. But the nice thing about that is that if I can get the template right, that means my foam is going to be perfect rather than having to sort of, you know, notch out a piece of foam. I want to get the template exactly right right now so that when the foam goes in, it's done and it's perfect and it's ready to go. I've already got a sheet that's laid up, so I can almost complete this section have this area ready, you know, within the next hour or so. You can see I've already cut a couple of slots here and here for where this template needs to fit. Now, ultimately, these flanges, the majority of them are going to be cut off, but I do need them to be able to glass them to the bulkhead. So I'm not gonna cut that one off. This one's likely to be glassed to that bulkhead, and then this piece will be glassed from the rear, the backside, onto this floor piece. So very complicated, but very strong way to build a boat. But that there is going to be the, the, uh, the slot where this template's going to fit, and I'm just gonna trim it, and then it should be able to fit straight back in. Okay, as you can see, the picture that I'm putting on the screen right now is that this has to have a notch out because of this raised lip here. Um, uh, for now, I'm going to notch it out. I do have to remember that this is going to have a, a floor, um, some sort of a floor substrate on it. So, um, to be honest, I'm not overly concerned about this, but I'm going to notch this out because I do need to lower this by about five mil, but ultimately on the end result, um, I need to make this match with the floor so that I can get the, the actual sole to join into the edge here with a nice neat bead of, uh, of some sort of a sealant or you know, a cornice or something. I'm not really sure, quadding or something, whatever we're going to put in there. So I do need to, to cut this out like so along here um, just so I can get this to sit down flush and then I can fit this freezer unit and, uh, and work out this template perfectly. You know, I think it's like the 15th or 15th time I've been up and down here, cut this, trim it, cut it, trim it. Here we go again, that's the thing with templating, it takes the time but then it saves you in the long run but it doesn't feel like it's gonna save you until you freaking get the last piece done. But anyway, here we go again. What I decided to do was that it needed to be 900 high at the bench top from the bottom of the companionway, not from the raised stair, because it was like up around my chest, and that'd be around Janet's eyebrows, so she'd never be able to reach into the freezer and uh, and pull out the fish that I'm going to catch. So anyway, so let's try that. sort of what I was aiming for and then it'll step up again as we go through this door and this companionway but that's um, pretty well spot on where that needs to be now. So going up and down those stairs has been wonderful not having to slide up and down that chamfer panel but the problem is I've got a hole. I probably should have left the hole there but I needed really to see what sort of access I was going to have because once it's in place I can't see what's underneath it. So what I've done is I've just cut some um, marine ply that I had excess to put in the hole and that's going to solve a lot of problems. It means I can actually traffic up and down and actually step on that hatch because it is a bit of a void and I can see someone going in there and uh, breaking a leg or something and it's probably going to be me when I'm carrying something I can't see so 
Uh, that's what I've been doing the last half hour or so. I've just cut one piece to fill the bottom part of the hatch and that'll actually form the sub floor. Um, remember, this is going to be foam core, but I need a good template to, uh, to derive for later on. So that's what I've done here. I've basically done this one and then put that one in place. So this one uh, fits into the bottom ring like so. But the problem with that is it's actually going to have too much load on that little lip that's still there. So I'll then cut another piece of MDF that is going to fit over the top. Like so. And nicely now, what I'll do is I'll screw those two together right now and therefore make a really solid floor. Now that's just a simple piece of MDF, but this is going to be a template for later on. So not a waste of time. That should do the trick. And that now it's got uh, support on both lips, on the un under lip as well as the next lip as well. And All right, so this freezer project's going along well. All I'm doing is basically a face and under there there'll be a compressor and along the back face on the inside of this uh, freezer, all that's going to be in there is simply a grid or a, a panel that's actually attached to the compressor and there'll be a drain to the outside, to the to the outside hull. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty simple fix and you know, the puzzle's starting to come together. Now tomorrow I'm gonna come straight in. First thing I'm gonna do, do is cut a door here and then I'm thinking I might redo the template of this galley and uh, start putting in some paneling and it means that I can start to really think about how I'm gonna cut and box in this section here. Uh, right through to the back template. So yeah, pretty positive um, couple of days I've had it here um, doing a bit of templating and getting everything back in place for just one big session of tabbing. Can't wait. And uh, as you can see, everything's pretty much ready and uh, ready for me to start tabbing in and filling in the gaps and really get going. You know, after all of this uh, fire anxiety, I'm pretty happy to be to be uh, moving forward and doing something bloody positive after four weeks of just spinning wheels. Thanks for joining me in this episode, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I'm up at 12,500 subscribers. I think that's absolutely bloody incredible, to be honest. But, uh, you know, getting back to Janet um, moving out on me, um, that's actually been happening for the last seven years. Janet actually lives and resides in Sydney uh, for three days a week and works in the city. Um, just so I can essentially get on with uh, firstly our business down here and secondly the boat building so it gives me two nights a week where I can uh, spend the time editing and 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 that takes up a hell of a lot of my time so kudos to Sam give me a hand again he always pulls out the stops and gives me a hand it was a stinker day but the the reality is the last two months um, this country has been absolutely smashed and, and our tour operators on the south coast and restaurants and accommodation houses and everything down here on the south coast of New South Wales, south of Sydney for a thousand kilometres have essentially been annihilated. All of their business that they would otherwise uh, generate in that six or eight week period has been essentially snatched away with these fires. So it's been a horror period. Um, I can't hide my my um my my anxiety i guess because uh, at the end of the day it's it's affected me it's affected everybody that we know so it's been a pretty tough time and uh, and and you know if you're an australian you need to come down and visit this region because we're really untouched and and patronize the accommodation and the restaurants and just get these people you know, back on their feet because it's been an incredibly tough period and, and we will probably never see another period like this again. Or well, I hope to Christ we don't because it's just been, you know, just devastating to everybody involved, all our friends, families, um, co-business owners, you know, they've all struggled with uh, with an absolute pits of a season and, uh, and you know, just the devastation that that's, this thing's left has been just unbearable. Um, but on the uh, on the on the upside is this weekend we experienced an east coast low, which is like a cyclone, but essentially it's like a category one cyclone that sat off our coast here, 
and dumped um, around about 13 inches of rain into Sydney and flooded Sydney. The irony is a month ago we were burning, now Sydney's been flooding all weekend and that move just so happened to happen that day. Uh, we here in Jervis Bay didn't uh, come off too bad. We had horrendous winds. We, we, I think we ended up with about eight or nine inches of rain over a couple of days. The fires are officially out and we can all breathe a sigh of relief and hopefully move on with our lives. Um, the preparation that everyone went through, every, we had cars packed with evacuation gear on a daily basis for around about three or four weeks. So um, I'm pleased to announce that it's over. I'm also pleased to announce that Janet hasn't left me. It was a bit of a joke that I put in earlier on and uh, you know I tried to deal with it very quickly and uh, I'll let you know that she hasn't left me. She'd be crazy to leave me, wouldn't she? Uh, we've got to do what we've got to do and we've got to work where we've got to work and try to, to get on with the project and, and the boat project well you know in the video editing it just goes along uh, as we as we uh, as we need to so thanks for joining me guys thanks for everybody who supports the videos don't forget to uh, to share it out to your friends and thanks for watching because I just appreciate that more than anything thanks guys I'll see you next time on life on the house <laughs>